Let me start with a few quick fire. Quick fire. Donald Trump. Is he racist? Yes. Is he sexist? Yes. Is he misogynist? Yes. Is he a narcissist? Bingo. Is he of <clears throat> low IQ? I would put it this, this way. He's managed to go through life um, absorbing as little information as possible. I suspect he's probably, um, that he's no genius. Um, he's, and he's, he's definitely, he's proudly not yeah, he well just read. yeah yeah he's proud he he doesn't read I mean he's literally I think I think has spent um, most of his life rejecting information. Is he? Um, do you do you, did you do you think he might have mental health issues? I don't know. I think he has always been a a, a peculiar person, um, peculiar in his in his responses, peculiar in in his reactions different clownish I think um, I know that you know in the White House it's a it's a discussion it's almost one of those steady discussions it used to be you know, that he repeated the same three stories every 30 minutes now it's the same three stories every 10 minutes and there's open speculation whether this is 25th Amendment stuff or whether the 25th Amendment which would say he's unfit to be president yeah that goes to the disability of the yeah. president and the processes there or whether it's just he's not getting enough sleep it's it's the the the, the pressures are so great et cetera, et cetera. but it's a it's it's disconcerting to everyone do you feel slightly ashamed to be American that he's your president no um, I, I I tend to think and maybe I'm just remain sort of um, optimistic that this is an aberrant thing this kind of thing comes along um, and it will it will write itself I, how, I how think I it, but what might what might be done along the way well do you think, well, that's, do you think that's one been of damaged the things, already I, I think um, I was I was more concerned and not that I won't become yet concerned about this but I was more concerned uh, during the George Bush presidency um, you know, one of the things about, about Donald Trump, it's almost like a silver lining. He just doesn't know enough to do anything, to, to, uh, to mobilize this government, this, you know, the executive branch, this enormous bureaucracy is literally beyond his capabilities. Um, you know, George Bush obviously sent us to, to war, many wars. Um, the idea of Donald Trump sending us to war, of Donald Trump sitting in a room with generals long enough to send us to war is almost beyond, man, uh, beyond being so, so, the, so the saving grace is that he has no capacity and no attention span. Exactly. I mean, I mean you know, that's not, so obviously he can't, he can't do anything good, but he is, at that same token, there, there's, there may be a baseline of the bad things that he can do also. So what does it say about, about America that he became president? When people knew that he was racist, sexist, misogynist, I, you, you know, this, you, you, Steve Bannon's view is that there are two countries and they are at war with each other and one will win and the other will lose. You know, and certainly at, 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 it's, it's hard to disagree with that. And of those two, of those two sides, which is winning? I would say uh, actually in a larger sense, the, um, 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 and I'm trying to say this in a value-free way, but the good guys are winning. Right, okay. And so this is, in a way, Donald Trump, you can see this as kind of a last stand. Mm. Um, a last stand of a, of, a, of, a, of a demographic that is literally disappearing. Mm. Why, do, why do you think he gave you the time of day? because he's a numbskull. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I actually, you know, so I saw somebody from the, the, the Obama White House last week or the week, week before and, and who said, <laughs> I said, how was, this would never ever in a million years have happened in, in, the, in the Obama White House. If something like this, if it came on the horizon, it would be, it would be debated, dissected, yeah. 
analyzed. So how and did then, you how did you how did you get in? How did the project get off the ground? Because it wasn't debated, dissected, analyzed. So how did it happen? Um, well, quite literally, it happened that I went to the to president elect, um, I think early December, and said I would like to come to the White House to be an observer. Um, um, at that point, he, he, he thought I was asking for a job. Um, and that made sense because he has no idea what the jobs are in the White House. So, so he thought there was a job in the White House called observer. It may be deputy assistant observer. Right. Um, and, um, and I said, no. Assistant I'm, secretary for observation. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, I said, no, I'd like to, I'd like to write a book. Um, and his face just deflated totally uninterested in that. Um, um, but he didn't say no to it either. He said, yeah, yeah, sure, uh, you, know, um, um, you know, break a leg, whatever. Um, and I actually went back to Steve Bannon and I said, and I said this is what he said. And, and Bannon said, well, it's not a no. <laughs> and then that became kind of a yes. And um, and sort of everybody in the White House was told, uh, you know, there's a guy doing a book. You should speak to him. Um, and everybody spoke to me. And, and so the what, what nature... So what was the first time you were, after his election, what was the first time you were in the White House? Uh, uh, well, uh, the, so the inauguration was on the 20th. I think that was a Friday, as I recall. The next week I was in, I was probably in by Wednesday or... Wednesday or Thursday. And how many, how many times you in, were you You know, usually there? every every week, a couple of days, every week, I would go down and... Um, and Did you have a pass? And sit. You would, whoever was your first appointment would put you in the system. And uh, have you, you, you've been yeah, to yeah, the White yeah, House yeah. and you go in on Pennsylvania Avenue and, yeah. you know, and you're in. Um, and then you would go into the West Wing and, um, you know, you say, here, I'm here to see whoever, Bannon, Kellyanne, um, and then you plop down on the couch and then no one comes for you. So you just sit there because, you know, it's the White House. Nobody, you know, appointments are... So you never got thrown out? Never. And Nobody quite, ever came and said, excuse me, what are you doing? No, there? everybody comes to sort of understand and they feel sorry for you too because you're waiting for Steve Bannon. That means you could be waiting days. Mm. Um, and, then, and then as you have your appointments, people get to know you I mean, they recognize you, and they sort of maybe knew me anyway. And, um, and then it's like, oh, you're waiting for Steve. Uh, well, you, you want to just come back and, um, uh, you know, come back and have a chat. Um, what was the most surprising thing? The most surprising thing was over the course of this, just really about seven months that, I, that I'm there, people go, the, the president's closest advisors, I watched them go through an arc, rather, of, of being confident about this presidency, about their job, supportive, to being puzzled by it, to being confused by it, to being disillusioned by it, to being incredulous, and then I, th I think being afraid, too. And then, and then the, the conclusion, and this is literally everyone, 100%, getting to the point of saying that they really don't think this guy can do what you have to do to function in this in this job. And yet, if they can, they they stay, and the ones that don't stay. Virtual. Well, well, that's out. well, that's a curious thing. Cause almost everybody has left. Yeah. Um, Who has left? Everybody has left, or is in the process of of, of leaving. Um, um, who's 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 still standing? Well, McMaster is still there, but I don't think that that's, that's very long. Kelly is obviously there, but I don't think that's, um, uh, he'll be there too much longer. And they weren't there at the start, were they? Um, Kelly wasn't there at the, at the start. McMaster so came so, in a little, yeah. a little, a little later. Um, but, you know, and then the, then the two, you know, you know, really the two, the, the president's two central advisors now are this woman, Hope Hicks, yes. who's, now what's the score there? I, the score? You know, she's 28, 29. She was a, f a former junior fashion PR person um, and, and sort of, sort of a, a, a kind of, I mean, went on to the campaign as sort of intern body person, spokesperson, 
because he was his own spokesperson, so she was, you know, she was the person who got the, uh, certainly when I was around, you know, you know she got the coffee. Um, and, um, it, you know, perfectly, perfectly nice person, knows nothing about nothing. Um, and then the other guy is this guy, Stephen Miller, yeah. um, who's, I don't know, early 30s, and Bannon would refer to him as my typist. Um, so those people now have risen to, they are the president's central political and policy advisors. And you mentioned Bannon quite a few times. How, how much was this book actually driven by him? Hmm. Yeah, a significant voice in the book, but literally everybody was, a, was participated in one way or, or the other. I mean, Steve did you, was, did you get him at a moment of pretty high hubris? I got Steve at a moment of high hubris and a mo moment on which he was um, in a moment of, of, of tragic, tragic loss. Um, the loss being? You know, that he had lost influence in the White House, that right. he had lost yeah. belief in, in Trump. In the, in Trump. Um, and does he seriously believe he could be president? At the end of the book, you kind of hint that Bannon thinks that. Yeah, I, he I mean, that. I, think, I think that he, I mean, I know what the, what, what, so at the end of this, this, in his strategy, Steve is not where he thought he would be at this, at this moment, but in, a, in thinking through this, he believed the guy in Alabama, Roy Moore, would, would have won that Senate seat. And he was Bannon's candidate and Trump, not Trump's candidate. So Bannon would have been the kingmaker. Right. Um, he would have gone into the 2018 as the central, you know, as the, as the central political presence for the, um, uh, the you know, the, the far right. Um, and um, and how, I think- Just, just how far right is he? And how far right do you think Trump is? Um, I think Bannon is, Far right. I mean, his you know this his idea, this national nationalist populist movement, which he conceives on a global basis. So it's all connected. It's connected to Farage. It's connected to Le Pen. It's connected to this guy Salvini in Italy. Um, um, it, it's a it's he rolls this all into into one. And what's happened in the U.S. He sees as part of that. Right. Um, it's a big part of it. Um, now, is Trump part of it? Bannon had certainly hoped Trump was part of it, and he has certainly used Trump to, um, um, uh, as an advantage in creating this, this, this movement. But I think Bannon came to see that Trump was, was really has no s sort of certainly no intellectual grounding in this yeah. in this move so he he kind of used trump in his own way just um, as you did yes for and, totally different purposes yes, yes and trump used bannon um but that was also kind of happenstance that he used he used bannon you know bannon i mean trump bannon comes along the the trump campaign in august is down you know i don't know 16 to 20 mm. points it's it's not a point it cannot recover mm. um and then Bannon comes in and, um, and has a plan. And the plan is very straightforward. And, and the, the path is through Florida, Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And the message is this national populism. Yeah. And they win literally on that, on that basis, on nothing else. And on Bannon's understanding that, that, um, uh, that the real asset that they have is is Trump who can go to these rallies with 35, 40,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. And how, how's your, how have your relationships, how are your relationships with these people now? Are they all, are bridges all burnt? Yeah, yeah. Does that bother you? Yeah, no. I mean, I mean and, you know, bridges will, I mean, I will, I haven't spoken to Steve since the book came out, but I will, I will reach out sometime soon, I think. Um, and will he be receptive? Maybe. I, and I what think. about, I couldn't quite work out your, your own take on Jared and Ivanka. It felt like it was Bannon's kind of portrayal of them. And that's not yeah, at all I think, flattering, but what was your sense of them? Yeah, um, it's, it's, they're preposterous. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, what are they doing there? They're perfectly decent people, they seem. You are know, they? You know, they're intelligent enough. Um, they're not rogues. Is she more intelligent than her father? 
She is more intelligent than her father. Yeah. Less intelli- more intelligent than her brothers. Yes. Yeah. Is the father more intelligent than the brothers? Yes. <laughs> the brothers are really dumb. Um, um, but um, but you know, she, I mean, let's not. I mean, she's perfectly. They're perfectly fine people. Um, they just don't belong in the White House. Not only do they not belong, it's absurd that they're that they're in the White House, and not only that they're in the White House, but they're in a White House in a position where they 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 kind of rule it. Um, are they, they the, are they the driving power at the, the moment? Well, the, the driving power <laughs> is Trump. Right. Um, um, but they and, are, and Trump in what form? Trump not with a set of beliefs, but just Trump sort of doing stuff. Impulse. Minute by minute. Yes, it's just impulse. His, his, you know, his desire and need to be satisfied um, at at any given moment. That's what runs this this White House. Do you think he cares? You see the people that voted for him. Do you think he's remotely motivated by them? Does he have a sense of why they voted for him and what they want? Because he actually seems to me to be doing quite a lot of the opposite. I just think of it, he's motivated, motivated by an audience. Um, and think of that, he's motivated, think of him just as a reality sh- show performer. Motivated by an audience, motivated by what motivates that audience, motivated by what gives him ratings. Right, but not by what changes their lives. No, 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 no. It's all about, it's, it, nothing flows from Trump. It all has to flow toward him. It's all about what he gets. I don't even think he can see, can conceive of the other side of that. A given. So, so that is kind of narcissism, really. Isn't it? He's in power for himself, and he doesn't really care about those people. When, when I saw uh, during the campaign, when I interviewed him, this would be June 2016, at a moment when it obviously <laughs> was, didn't even cross my mind that he was going to be the president. So the question was, why was he running for president? And I said to him, what's your goal? And he was very straightforward, very calm, very straightforward. He said, it's to be the most famous man in the world. Hmm. And I thought, okay, a level of self-awareness, hmm. okay. And why would he want to be that, given he was already quite famous? Um, what does he get out of that? I, I, th- I think he gets um, more attention. I, I don't, I, so I think he, 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 and he has this, what comes through as well is this very curious, relationship with the press, hating them but wanting to be loved and respected by them. And the same with the establishment, hating them but wanting them to love him. Exactly. Totally. So, so, so that? what's that about? I think it's just partly about, uh, you know, again, going to the reality show um, um, model here is about conflict. Conflict works. You don't really have to understand conflict. You don't, it doesn't have to be even real conflict. There don't have to be any stakes or there can be high stakes. It doesn't matter. Just to make the show work, it has to be, there cannot be too much conflict. There can only be too little conflict. I know, because that's the other thing, reading the book, is just how the stuff that at the time seemed amazing, that we've now just forgotten. Like, you know, in a few months we'll have forgotten that he said we should put guns into schools with teachers. Right. I mean, what does that say? It's, um, well, it says something about, about the level of, of, the level of, it says two things. <laughs> about the level of conflict, you're just, you're just revving this conflict, and that the conflict fundamentally has no meaning. Mm. In other words, if we started a, a, a campaign to, to arm teachers and do everything that you would have to do to accomplish that, then we would remember that. But if you just say it, and then nothing, and happens. Then nothing happens, it goes away. Right, it's crazy. It's completely crazy, I mean, it's, it's it's another model. Just think about it. It's just reality TV. Could he win again? I don't think so. No, I don't think he, I mean, I don't think he could win again, and I don't think he will run again. Because if he worried, he wouldn't win. But he Bec- may- because, also because, wh- why? He's already done this. Um, you know, his, one of his gifts, always been an, an extraordinary gift, is to be able to, in the midst of huge failure, declare victory. Mm. Mm. It's pretty sad stuff. And what do you think is, um, uh, have, you, have you been able to pick up while you've been here the extent to which he is pretty despised around the world? Yeah, no, I think he's, he's, he's despised everywhere outside of this unique base of people that um, appear to adore him. Mm. 
Mm. So this binary thing is is weird. I mean, it's not as if it's not as if there's people who adore him, and then there's people who like him, and then there's you 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 go down, and there says mm. it's literally this enclave mm. believes this, and everybody else believes the opposite. What do you think will happen if he does come here on a state visit? Uh, you, you know, I, I think I think it will be um, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the Russia thing could get him? I think almost anything could get him. The Russian thing could get him. The obstruction, the cover-up of the Russian thing could get him. The girls could get him. The money could get him. Um, the, he's not safe at any point here. The people who have worked for him could get him. His family could flip on him. Um, his wife could leave him. There is nothing, nothing in the Trump universe that you could say is, um, is reliably on his side. And yet, he's still there, and, and the yet. Republican Party is kind of tolerating him, seems to be. They tolerate him, but you know, when just after the election, Mitch McConnell said, <laughs> you know, he's an idiot, but he will sign anything we put in front of him, which has proved to be actually true. Mm. At the same time, they hate him. They hate him because, you know, he, he calls and he yells at them and he belittles them mm. and, and, you know, he comes up with names for them and, mm. um, um, and, and perhaps most of all, he doesn't listen to them. Mm. Now, you've had a bit of stick for your, um, quite a few journalists have come out and suggested your book's not all it's cracked out to be. Maggie at the New York Times questioned you a bit. And I just want to... You, 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 you acknowledge some fact checkers, but has this been fact checked in the same way as a newspaper article would be? Probably not, and it's, that's probably its, its virtue. Um, you know, I mean, the n newspapers are, are, I mean, we do different things. And that's what, you know, the Washington Press Corps, of which I'm not a part of, have never wanted to be a part of, um, have never been even interested in. Um, has a um, has a has a specific function. You know, they got to log this every 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 day. Um, I don't have to log this every day. I get I get to write a book. I don't have to do what the New York Times says to do. You remember, the New York Times is as much as they are reporting the news. They're not reporting the news. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of painting a picture. Yes. I, and you know, and it's very clear. You know. Um, you know, when I'm writing this, when I write, when I wrote this book, I'm not thinking. You know, I'm thinking about how um, I don't know how Norman Mailer would do it, or or Mark Twain would do it, or Armando Iannucci would do it. Uh, I'm certainly not thinking about how Maggie Haberman would do it. Um, right. Um, and and there's a big difference between me and them. And one of the big differences, I don't work for anybody. So, you know, and there aren't too many people covering this right now, in a sense. There's the New York Times, there's the Washington Post, there's a couple of... Well, covering uh, the book or covering Trump? Covering Trump, covering right. networks. I mean, it's a yeah, very yeah. institutional, yeah, yeah. um, top-down way of approaching this. You know, I come out of... Uh, um, you know, I come out of a world where there was uh, lots of ways to do journalism. I, right. mean, I come out of the magazine journalism world. Um, so you're trying to tell stories. Um, I come out of a world where, you know, a freelance world. People, you know, writers were responsible only to what they're writing and to their, and to their, right. their so, readers. So, so, so you, you would feel comfortable in, in reporting things that people have said to you without necessarily knowing for sure whether what they're saying is true? Absolutely. I don't feel, um, first thing, I don't feel I have a monopoly on truth, nor that I feel that I should have a monopoly on truth. And I feel that my function is, is different than, um, than the New York Times function. The New York Times function is, to, is, is, is a very narrow cast view of, of, of facts. Okay. Um, my function is to have an experience and, and um, and come in contact with characters and to get them on the page so that so that a reader can experience them in a in a way that um, well is as close to the way that I experience okay. them. Okay. You see if you state the I know you're on Ma talking about Tony, my friend Tony. 
uh, this morning. And so I, I cannot imagine, Tony Blair, knowing as well as I do, I cannot imagine him having a difficult, sensitive, potentially controversial conversation with anybody else if in that space there is somebody that he doesn't know. You know, well, remember, he's had this conversation. It's not a, this was not a difficult um, conversation. This was a total, you know, please like me, please use me, please hire me conversation with Jared Kushner. But I just don't um, believe that Tony would do that. And he's standing... I wouldn't do, believe, don't believe he would do it, and he certainly wouldn't do it in front of somebody sitting over and there. He's, remember, he's standing in, in the White House. And the conversation, I, I can tell you, I mean, it was a totally, I mean, it was a conversation that I actually, I'm, I'm writing down because I'm thinking, oh my God. Um, and it was basically, and, and the line was not actually even Tony's line that, that, that stuck out most of all. It was Jared's line um, in which Jared said, they were, t they were talking about the Middle East and about this, about uh, um, um, Thing. I mean, they're they're obviously saying goodbye to one and each one. Tony is 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 leaving, and um, and they're talking about what they're going to do coming forward. And he's Tony is very solicitous to Jared. You know, and Jared. You know, even that we're already in a situation. Why would Tony Blair be solicitous to Jared Kushner? He's a polite okay. guy. Yeah. Um, and so Jared they've, they've says, had, but hold on a minute. They've had a meeting. Yes. So how come? Why have they had a meeting and they come out into a corridor? And they start talking about things that sound to me like one a bit weird, the idea that the British security services were spying. No, they're, on. they're not. They don't have that. That's not the conversation that so they're having. So what's the conversation there. they're having? No. So Mar asked me just about. Um, he didn't ask me about that conversation, or at least I didn't understand him to be asking. He asked me about about Tony trying to curry favor, um, and so that's the conversation that I was witness to a kind of currying a favor conversation and then of Jared saying... Well, but in the book, you, you're basically... <coughs> you're saying, you're saying uh, no. both that Tony wanted a job, which I don't believe he does, and secondly, that Tony was suggesting that the, uh, the security service... Uh, our totally. security service so spied on Trump, the, which that, is nonsense. Well, and I can't believe he would say that to anybody. All... <laughs> I, what I know about that is that that was... That's... Re that was reported to me, and the consequences of it, re of it were reported. Which was Bannon which getting in a car and going to the CIA. Bannon and Kushner getting in the car to go into C to the CIA to see if what the CIA, if what Tony said to the president was true, um, or the so, implications of it were true. And again, and I, I was careful to say, I don't know if, if, if Blair said, this is what might have happened, or this could have happened, or anything. All I know is that, is that the president took from that, that um, took from what Tony Blair said that the Obama administration had in some way wiretapped him right. um, and s immediately sent Bannon and Kushner out to Langley to find right. out about it. That's what I know. Right. Was you, but was you and I know that, that, that they were having a, con and, then, and then I saw Tony and Jared having this conversation, and Which is Jared just kind of says, see you later totally. kind of conversation. Jared says, says, damn it, we can solve this problem, the, the Middle East. Right. But that's not Tony Blair groveling for a job in any shape or form. You know, that's... So also, it's unfair to call him a liar based upon him saying that the conversation that you reported in the book never took place. I, as I... As I um, the Mar thing was, was he groveling for a job? What I witnessed was a man, um, uh, uh, was a man certainly sucking up to somebody who could give him a job. Jared. Yeah. Can't see it. Can't see it. Well, you know, that's what, Tony needs a job, Jared's got the job. Tony doesn't need a job. Uh, okay. well, listen, we all need a job. Hey, no, we, no, you don't need a job now. Eh? But tomorrow again. Now I come will. on, come on. So come on, let's let's. How how are you into eight figures yet? You're definitely into seven figures. Seven figures in how in in which side of the? I'm this? talking about dollars. About the book. I this must know. have made you a lot of money. I don't know. Well, we're waiting to see. Eh? You know. You translated in 35 languages already. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mo so mo movie deal. Remember the movie deal. And you're going to make the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So you're well into eight figures. Yeah. You're well into eight figures. 
So, and Donald Trump, you say in the book, Donald Trump does not like people who get success, as it were, off his back. Really? You kind of say that. Yes, no, it's, and it's really true. So he it's, must really, really thing. hate you now. Yes, yes. How does that but, make you feel? Um, well, it makes me feel that, that it will probably, he'll, he'll figure out how to declare victory here. And he's going <laughs> to call me up and claim credit for the book, which, to be perfectly honest, he yeah. certainly sort of deserves. He has kind of given a new life to journalism and satire and the publishing industry. Yeah, and not only that, you know, by coming out and, and trying to stop publication of this book, it was like, oh my God. Uh, is <laughs> just smile on me. Um, no, there was no worry at all, no fear at all, because he's the president. I know you, you may be a numbskull, I but would, he's the president. I would say that the among the things and the president can do many things. The president can't do many things, but the one thing he really can't do is stop the publication of a book. Right, right. But. That being said, was there not a moment? You may, you may have said, wow, this is going to help publicity, which it did. But it's quite a thing to get a letter like that from a lawyer when you're talking about somebody no, who's representing no, the president. Totally. Was, and um, I guess there probably was a second's hesitation, but I got to say that my publisher... It was tough. They just went in. I mean, they, I don't think they had a second's. I think they thought, oh, my God. Mm. Have you been surprised just how many copies this is selling course, around the world? Of course. I mean, you, could, you have to be. I mean, this has never happened. Be, this apparently, literally, for a nonfiction book, has never happened before. So that we're in some phenomenon, Trump land phenomenon, mm. which is, you, you know, a. a I, so that I, bit he probably likes. The yes, idea that a that's book why he'll, he'll. That's why he's going to. He literally is going to figure out a way that this book redounds to his credit and not yeah. the opposite. Yeah. What do you, just on um, what, something sort of closer to home, what do you think he, uh, he thinks of Britain at the moment? Do you think he cares? Do you, I, think, he, do you think the Brexit, is the Brexit thing part of this Steve Bannon, you know, alt-right movement? And do you think Trump, this idea that he's going to give us some fantastic trade deal, would he even kind of know what that means and what the impact of that is? Well. You know, the, the Brexit thing is, because when I interviewed him in the beginning of June, mm. it was like a few weeks before the Brexit vote, um, and, I said, um, and I said, well, what's your view on Brexit? And he said, what? And I said, y you know, um, Brexit. And he said, huh? And I said, y you know, <laughs> I was like, um, um, you know, the, the vote um, in the UK to leave the European Union. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm for that. Um, so the depth of his understanding here is shallow, to say the least. Bannon is close to Farage, so there's some something there. But I think uh, so. I think from Bannon's point of view, there's there's clearly something there. Um, but from Trump's point of view, I don't. I just don't think he could care less. It's just right. so far outside of his. Of of anything that that um, that floats his boat, and when he's when he's in bed with his Big Mac and his three TV screens, and he's phoning all these billionaire, billionaire friends of him, he'd never think, give Macron a call, give Merkel a call, talk about. They're just not on his radar unless they're on it unless they have to be. Yeah, no, um, and I and I think I mean, can the UK get some special deal? Yes, anybody can get a special deal as long as they're nice to him. As long as they flatter him and as long as they give him something that he wants. So if he came on a state visit and it was a kind of complete dog's dinner of protest and a mess, that could be a real problem. Yeah, huge he would, problem, yeah. He would take that really personally. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then no deal. Then fuck you. Right. Totally. But on the other hand, if somebody comes up with something, I don't know what it is, that the UK could offer Donald Trump. Um, a statue. A statue, possibly a, a museum, a, a hotel site. Uh, I, I don't. You're yes, right. Claridge's. <laughs> yes, I think it's. Um, then, then, um, then, possibly. Yes, sure. It's, it's hard for other leaders to kind of deal with that. What do you think of the Putin yeah. relationship? Weird. Yeah, it's weird. Clearly, he has some. You know, I mean, obviously, he's got a Putin man crush. He wants 
approval. Mm. He wants something. Do you think he's jealous of it? Could be jealous of him, Power. and could be, I don't know, could be. Does Putin have something on him? I mean, that's the, that's the question. I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I got a description of this, this um, trip that they did to, Trump did in 2013 to Russia, and he expected um, that Putin was going to greet him and the, you know, the oligarchs were going to line up, and none of that happened. And, as someone described it to me, you know, he had to go to a dinner, and the, you know, the you know the guy next to him couldn't use utensils. So, um, um, so he felt he felt that he had not achieved what he the what he had set out to achieve, and then the possibility is that he's that he has continued to pursue um, Russian love, but in one way or the other. Um, now, listen, my predecessor in this role as GQ interview was Piers Morgan. Did you see his interview with your president? I, um, I, I saw a part of it and I have spoken to Piers about the president. Um, and, um, and just FYI, when Piers left that role, then I got the job of interviewing Piers for his ah, final interview. Very so, good, yes. very good. So um, we're in a nice little metropolitan elite bubble. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but did you, um, uh, well, we don't want to make too much time on Piers, but I just wonder whether you, what, what you thought of the interview technique with Trump. It wasn't quite what's your favorite color, but it wasn't far off it. I um, am very fond of Piers. Um, and so in what I'm about to say, he will deny. But I suspect it is um, absolutely 100% true. The, they're not doing doing interviews. The White House is not doing and Trump is not doing interviews unless the White House gets the questions beforehand. Hmm. The friends' wives thing, that's just fucking weird. Extraordinary. Do you, but do you know that's happened? Yes, absolutely. So he sits there with the wife of a guy on the speakerphone tempting the guy to talk about wanting to have sex with other women. That's it. Mm. I mean, this is a this is a guy with. I mean, I you know I, I know a friends of Trump, who you would say are. I don't know what you would say about them, but um, um, but they, whatever you would say about them, they say they say you know, you, you have to understand Donald Trump has no scruples. <laughs> mm. We're we're in a land, so it's the land of the people without scruples defining Trump as, as a person fundamentally, truly, without any kind of moral basis. So when you, in whatever criticisms you have of George W, when he said, that's some weird shit. That was some weird shit. Mm. And the whole thing is some weird shit. Extraordinary. But it's made you very, very successful. Well, I gotta say, you know, it, it, it is, a hell of a story. <laughs> <laughs>